Hey, um, okay. Thank you so much. Um, right now is time for the Q and A. So if you guys have any questions for Dr. Gandhi, she will be um, answering them. So feel free to ask. So I have a question. Like I see that currently there are many big data companies or database companies. And I wanted to ask what inspired you to start Future Tales and what makes it special? <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much for the questions. Um, Future Tales Lab is, is a future foresight research. Um, my mother company is the MQDC, the Magnolia Quality Development, the one who built Magnolia, condominium uh, icons and young wisdoms. We, we, we built the real estates and we do build cities. So it's very important for us to see a far future rather than, rather than to forecast the product cycles. Um, our theory, um, actually looking into 10 years ahead, 10 to 50 years ahead, um, to make sure that um, our products, uh, which is real estate structures, and um, also the cities would last long and will be able to adapt into the future. And um, we have two parts. One is the future foresight, but now the trends of the COVID, we kind of shorter the timeline uh, very pretty much from 10 years timeline lens to only um, two years ahead. Another thing is the data analytics, which I think um, is will be useful. I would like, I really like to invite you all you know, to participate, so is we, we're going to have it as an open source, but now we are devel developing it. We do the, we are collect, we, we are pulling um, the open data from all around the world that for, in particular that we are focusing on the climate crisis, a climate change, um, because we believe that that's something that we cannot control. The top flow down here, that we can predict up ahead then I don't ask the questions, but yeah, this is fine, me too. Um, Dr. Gandhi, hello? Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm here. Oh, okay, wait, it seems to be a bit lagging for some people, so wait let me okay it seems like it's back to normal okay yeah it, anyone who have more questions uh hi um hi dr kandi um i have a question um, so, uh, because of like the, um, COVID-19, uh, crisis, um, uh, what do you think will happen to, um, like world trade and how do you think it will like affect like the development of like, you know, like developing countries such as like Thailand? You mean the trade, right? Yeah. This is a really good question. Thank you so much for asking. Um, I think there are two questions that world trade, you know, how, you know, the global trade rather, and um, also um, how it could impact um, Thailand as a long run. Uh, let's do the, the trade um, area first. Well, I see that the world would shifting to the globalization will be um, affected in, 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 in much less. Um, from my research, a lot of countries and a lot of cities around the world are moving into the direction of self-sufficiency, especially in the supplies. Um, because I think most people see the same thing that, hey, this is a pandemic of the lifetime. A lot of people here and the leader around the world here never seen this before. We probably have seen Ebola, we have seen SARS, but not in this global pandemic. So I think the trade, um, and, and that would relate to the supply chain as well, will have to have, if 
from globalization, now it's going to move to regionalization and localization. I would see two polars, um, America there, and we have Asia, China is as a, um, as a lead, uh, but we used to have um, you know, European countries. But now I think, you know, the China would China have to be um, trade leaders. Um, but we have some factor that we need to look at it, whether um, any government and healthcare system proved out the success or not. Um, but a lot of, um, um, you know, trading, um, to answer the question, is going to be um, regionalization, supply should be shorter. And what I um, worried about is the next generations of trade war. I don't know if you um, you know familiar with it. Since uh, Trump, as a president, he declared trade war with China. Um, but now this is another thing comes up. And uh, this year, twenty twenty, it's another year they can have a U.S. presidential elections. What we concern that now, you know, Trump is actually fighting over his reputation back, right or wrong. You know, he has some popularity uh, within the United States, but um, it's going to have some trade discrimination towards Asia and China even more than before. This is what um, this is what I kind of you know see in my analysis. So, to your second question, how Thailand would evolve from here? Um, it's very tough questions, but let me share what I'm most concerned. I think my most concern is number one is um, um, in this COVID, if it takes too long for this, um, our economy would would be um, very bad. You know, even worse than Om Yam Kung crisis, and that the worst in my you know in my lifetime that I have seen. You know why? Because even before the COVID, I see the Thai economy is very fragile. Um, we, we our, our, you know, our analysts would say in a, you know, point in one direction that 2020 will be a very rough year. And that even before we know about the COVID. Um, the structures of GDP, um, us rely, right now, we rely on tourism and exports. And now everything comes down to, to crash right here. So our main engine is kind of dying down. So the only thing that we have is government spendings and, and, and domestic spendings that we, we're hoping that we can help, you know, just a little bit. Um, second that I worry the most is economic downturn and also the technology disruption that comes together at the same time. Um, only technology disruption. Um, I know that's a threat for many people, especially losing jobs to automations but now it come even faster because you see number one is um when a lot of company or manufacturing facility realize that a lot of stuff can be done you know, you know online you know, especially the service um service industries and the economy crunched down real bad um the thing that we need to do right now is cut the cost and cut all the fat so if happening, if the layoff happening right now, it's really hard to get back on track. So if I'm doing the job right now, you know, look like um, uh, the executives, but I, if I got laid off because my job is not the top, you know, at least needed anymore, and could be someone else doing, my, and also technology can do much better. If I got laid off here, my skill, if I don't change, um, my old job is not going to be there when the economy comes back. So uh, what I'm worried about is how it's, you know, go together, um, economy and the, uh, and the disruptions. The third one is, I see the inequality would be much higher than before because this COVID will bring three waves of unemployment from that already have two from the informal sector, which is happening right now. And three is, um, you know, the office worker that might have a chance to get laid off if the economy don't come back up anytime soon. So, and also the kids that be able to work online, uh, be able to study online, and majority of the children in Thailand that cannot access to the technology at all. So I see the digital divide and also the inequality gap that might be a problem as a long-term problem that we need to, to solve together. And that's why we need you guys, you know.
right startup to try to tackle this problem because this problem is real. It's, it's the problem of our generations. Um, oh. Hi. Hi. Uh, I have a question like for the economy right now, like what do you think is going to happen to like education in the future regarding like tuition free fees and like universities with the economy that's going to happen after COVID-19? It might take about two years for our economy to come back up at the same level as um, we had COVID. So that's a long time. Um, how would university or school react? That's a good question. Um, a lot of school has moved online, but to be honest to you, I don't think they're in a good quality or even right to the par um, when compared to you know face to face learning. Um, but that doesn't mean that I anti you know online learning. I'm the one who's a big fan of, of online learning. But I'm talking about um, that we need to improve quite much in terms of our teacher capability and also the education capability too. Um, what was the question? Oh, university. I see a really great example of some university in Thailand that provide a free online learning um, for people to reskill and learn new stuff that they didn't have a chance to. And that's something that we should. Um, you know, look out for and take advantage of it. I think it's pretty awesome. Yep. Um, short answer about economy is going to be real tough. <laughs> I have another question. Like, as high schoolers, I think we're at one of the biggest points in our life. Like, we're seeing what majors we want to study, what careers we want to pursue. So I wanted to ask if you have any advice on how we can prepare for like the technological disruption or just any changes that might happen in the future. Yeah. Keep on learning, keep on learning and focus on your essential skills. Um, I have, you know, my daughter is about, I think the same age as you guys is like, she's like 17. Um, the only advice that I tell her that, man, kids keep on learning. We never know what's going to happen in the future. And keep exploring your talents. Um, it's, it's right there, you know. You, you have to keep exploring, um, find, find new stuff. I think the most um, difficult thing when you go, uh, okay, uh, some fast fact that you probably know. Um, I, from engineering school, um, so it's only three years that I graduated from engineering school. What I've learned um, as a hard skill is already outdated. And that will come even quicker and quicker as you grow. But something that would be, um, will be useful for such a long haul is your essential skills. Sometimes we call it as a soft skill. Um, the skill that we need to learn how to learn. Um, collaborations is the key communication, creative thinking, and critical thinking. There are so whole lots of it. Um, but that's something that I, I believe that you, you should get, you know, get exercise. And don't forget, um, don't get trapped in education system success. Don't get yourself trapped into the work system that say, hey, you get promotion that means you're success. But no, mm -mm. you need to keep asking yourself, is this what we're going to do? If things change, try to be agile as possible. Keep on learning. And now you guys are lucky to be, to, believe it or not, um, I'm not worried about your generations. You guys you know to learn. You, you guys can self-learn a lot of stuff and self-taught a lot of stuff. What I worried about though is, is people in my generations that they are moms and dad and they got a lot of debt, you know, especially school tuition fee for the kids and all this stuff that they can't really adjust all that fast not as fast as you guys, so, yeah. Hello, is anyone gonna yep. ask? Um, so, I'm not entirely sure if you're the right person to ask, but I wanted to mention like racism. So mm -hmm. how do you think that the pandemic could affect like trades with, um, af like afterwards? How would you think trades would work with China or like hiring in workplaces? Since right now, I don't think lots of people yeah. be willing to, um, 
hire a Chinese person despite like not doing anything. So I just wanted to ask you. It's, thank you for your question. It's one of our top announced um, since January that we see trade discrimination because not because of trade imbalance, but it, it's because it's come from China. Um, we even project to see um, the trade discrimination and brand discriminations and the business discrimination even, um, sorry, it could be in a larger scale than before World War II. Um, yeah, um, that is one of scenario that we do the analysis and we, and we, and we you know, try to look at. Um, that's why um, one of the result that we see again, we see, we, we see that we're going to shift away from the globalizations to localization even more. So Arvind, I, you know, my short statement, yes, I agree with you. We see that as a problem and we don't want it to be because that comes from emotional crisis and can blow out to be something that our generation don't want to see, which is the racism and discriminations. Thank you. And that's, I'm talking about the business and brand discriminations too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you. Uh, I have a question. Yep. Uh, so I know you mentioned a little bit about it earlier, but since like my connection is pretty bad, I couldn't really catch on. But I was wondering, like after now that we're in quarantine and it appears that we are we can like work from home, how do you think that will like change the way people like like how it, how will it affect the workplace like, after this quarantine is over? Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Um, um, the workplace, I think they will have to shift. Um, a lot of executive friends from many industries, have, I have discussed with them. They said, we, they, they are what they are doing right now. The HR, the human resource team, are now brainstorming how we're going to build the new culture after COVID. Many companies said that we need to move forward and push into digital transformation. Don't bring people back to the... Um, you know, to, to analog world. If they can adjust fast, because now they change by force, not by choice, by force that, you know, you have no choice to do, you just have to do it. So the corporate culture will move towards digital, and that's for sure. And that's something that, it, 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 to be honest, it should be done for a long time. Let me give you some statistics. I think Thailand, by statistic that we have, um, not Thailand, say, say Bangkok, 30% of the job 30% of the job will be able to work online. So that means it can work anywhere. It uh, doesn't have to be in the office. But the reason why that we are in the office right now because the corporate culture um, still want to see you face to face. Um, I see that, ki that trends kind of shift um, towards that, you know, the flexible hours, but higher productivity. So we'll we have a workplace that, um, that we design, you know, cubicle, Office, well, you know, get out of here. Uh, I don't think anyone would love to do. The idea of co-working space, I think is still there, but the details inside would have to be changed. We, we, we don't expect to see people clustering at work together um, closely, shoulder to shoulder, in any time soon. Though it will come back, but not in any time soon. So it will change gradually. Uh, I give you an example of Finland. Um, that I said that 30% of Bangkok workforce will be able to work from home or online. In, fin in Finland, it's as high as 70%. So and that's something related to the quality of the job or uh, the requirements of the job as a high level, more professional, rather than the frontline services. So um, I think we are moving that way. Not, it, it probably not going to be as high as Finland in, any, uh, in, in, in the short time. But I see that the workforce... The office buildings, the schools has shifted and take advantage and take the benefit out of this incident. Oh, okay. Thanks, Thanks for okay. answering the question. <laughs> Uh, so this is one of my teacher's questions, but she doesn't have a mic, so I'll ask it for her. Um, what kind of economic sure. stimulus is the government providing to small and medium enterprises, and is it enough? 
What kind of, of what? Economic what? Economic stimulus. Oh, okay. For oh, is it enough right now? No, of course not. <laughs> Period. <laughs> um, it is tough to answer. Um, I hate to say that they need to much put a lot of money into it, but um, what I'm worried about that the SMEs, especially the medium corporate and the large one right now um not much of way off right now kind of maintaining um, but if that one crunch up you know to save the cost and no no trades going on you know no business going on there might be a huge layoff so that would impact along the chain because those are those are the people who are the spenders at the moment although we don't spend much anymore but at least we'll get they get economic going so what, what I expect to see that it has to be um, big enough and fast enough um, and targeted. I, I, say, I don't have the answer that how it should be done. Um, I just know that the concept from my friends, um, Dr. Santitan Satian Thai, you know, we, we discussed on that and he wrote on the articles that they, we need five T's for stimulus program. One is Titanic. If the government would need to inject money, it has to be huge big enough to make an impact. Two, uh, in a timely manner, fast enough. Um, people can't wait too long. Um, some people, a week is feel like forever, you know, forget uh, things running as a, and as a household expense. It has to target, um, no one size fit all. It has to be um, uh, temporary um, because it's come and go. It doesn't have, it can't just come and, 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 and give the money and, and stay there forever. So it's come and go to solve the problem. And when it's solved the problem, we're gonna go back to normal. So um, short answer is no, it's not enough. Um, long answer is we have to find a way to help people you know, in the targeted segment because we do have different needs, but we all in the same supply chain. Thank you. Um, I have a question, like I'm personally interested in data science and I was wondering if you foresee any changes or developments in the data science industry in the future. Like you mentioned how people would be more willing to share their personal data. I was just wondering if there are any possible other changes that you see. Might the future of data science will be very positive. So now people willing, number one, we say that we are kind of more open to give away the data. Um, and, and that's more data to, um, to play around, to analyze and, and to add values to the societies. Um, but when I think you are in the right track, you know, go for it. I totally support you on this. Um, it will be even more needed and, and become the fundamental of all the businesses. Um, we used to think about data science is just for, um, you know, the marketing, targeted market, targeted, targeted marketing, things like that. But now it's even more to that. And people see the need. Um, government sectors, large or small, how we formulate the industries, supply chain, you named it. Um, it's going to be, they're going to have the bright future. And we do need a lot of, you know, talented data scientists in our country. So, yeah, go cool for it. Okay, thank you. Is, is there anyone here thinking about the business that relate to the mental health? Oh, yes, I was actually wondering about it because you mentioned a lot about how problems in mental health could arise. So, yeah. I think that's something that, um, you know, if I talk to Beth, I, I know that you are looking to the entrepreneurship. This could be a grand opportunities. Um, I see that it's gonna be the society pain point. We don't have to go in the far future, it's actually right now. People are under a real stress, um, uh, being isolated, working from home, um, I believe that we are, you know, the lucky ones that we do have home, we do have space, we have internet connections. 
But a lot of people don't have that privilege and that create a lot of stress. Bad news is, I see, um, you know, it's a statistic from UK, from China, out of, you know, um, the effect of, of lockdown, um, the hotline for the, the mental health and or the domestic abuse has spiked up like that. And, and that's something I say that, hey, um, Thailand is, is also going um, into the same trends. Um, I, I'm talk, I, I was, you know, my team, um, she's one, one of the psychiatrists and she pointed that one out that could be um, a huge problem and could cause a long-term problem, especially in our generation of the psychological, you know, issues out of COVID. So therefore, you know, when society has a pain point, you know, enterprise-wise, there's an opportunity. And this opportunity to provide the service, you know, online consultancy, um, would, would, would be, you know, would be more, you know, will be easily accepted um, uh, or, or even build the service that help or reduce the impact of domestic abuse. It could be something that you can help save people's lives and at the same time become a great business as a social impact business. Yeah. And to add on to that, I feel like there's not only a lack of mental health resources, but also the stigma that it's a shame to go to a psychologist or psychiatrist because like you're mentally ill or something. So yeah, I think that stigma has to be eliminated too. Yes, that, that, yeah, that's exactly the point, yeah. Good one. Um, hello again. Um, my teacher has another question. Hi, Arvin. Yeah, okay. Sure. So she wants to ask about like the possibility of a second wave, just like Japan or Singapore, and how likely is it going to happen when the economy opens up again, like for Thailand, especially since we, we like use tourism as our main source of like income and stuff like that. And do you think that the government will be able to handle it better this time? the second wave of of like positive cases just like in japan they got oh, like oh i see absolutely sure yeah <laughs> we should be well aware um it's we don't wait until we have more tourism um but going on today right now that a lot of measures um, i see I just drove past Tesco Lotus in the Kalasha Sima, just right there. And he back my car, it's gone crazy. Um, it popped, uh, but you have to be mindful on this. I, I don't want to put the pressure loads on the, um, you know, on the doctors and the public health ministry because I somehow feel that this right or wrong is also our responsibilities. We need to understand that this pandemic is still with us and. Um, um, and, and also, it could come back uh, just any time. What I'm worried about is a seasonal effect. When we come to rainy season, the virus can spread much easier than, um, than, than we had before. So yes, we, do, we, 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 do, we, we, we are worried about it. Um, I would like you to think of um, the plot, you know, um, the y-axis is a number of cases. Um, the y-axis is um, um, it could be the number of cases. The x-axis is the time. So right now we kind of you know slow down a little bit, but somehow by statistics, the former colleagues from China and India state is in that if you don't lock down long enough, um, the second wave will come right back up, um, even uh, you know more severe than the first round. So so it. You know, it very much depends on us. Um, if you don't need to go out there, don't go out there. Um, if you can do this thing um, right in your home, be isolated, you know, a little bit more, perhaps a month or two. Um, I would like to, you know, to urge you, we, to urge us to do so. Yeah. So, yes, I'm worried. Um, so, but I don't think um, it will open up, you know, the, um, uh, the passenger airlines that soon. Um, I hope not. <laughs> I don't know for, for real, but I just hope not. 
it's really hard to control. Now we can control people in our country, but nope, not from our, not from other countries. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, any last minute questions? Our time is almost out. So if anyone has the last minute question, go ahead. Um, okay, well, it seems that um, no one has any more questions. Um, so we'll start closing this up. Thank you so much, Dr. Gandhi, for your time. And also, I wanted to share um, also, I wanted to share quickly that if you guys wanted to see any more um, more events like this, here are our social medias for the best. Um, here's our team. And we, if you guys want to know more about the competition or more events that we're doing, um, make sure to follow our Facebook and Instagram. So here, these are on the screen. Yeah, um, so yeah, thank you so much, Dr. Gandhi. We really appreciate your insight.